Hey fam, this is the VOD for the last live art study night hosted on my Twitch channel. It can be hard to set aside time for fundamental practice. I want to help motivate us all. Crack open your nearest tablet and join me for a paint-along experience every Monday night. Aside from fundamentals, every week we'll be diving into different fun prompts surrounding characters, places, props, and more. Want to catch the next one and add your study to the hashtag? Tune in at www.twitch.tv slash quellfabulous every Monday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. See you there. I just want to remind everybody that this is possible, made possible by viewers like you and from my good friends who support Patreon. Thank you so much for uh, fueling me and feeding me. Just like dabbing Moonkin is just going all out. So as my little uh, Photoshop thing has up here, tonight's topics, we're going to go over some tool talk. Um, so we'll talk about some four brushes that you need. Oh gosh, this air horn is just going to keep going off, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Or not sub followed. Turban. Oh shit. Uh, following. Following. I meant following. Thank you for following. Um, tool talk. Four brushes that you need, and these are four brushes that everybody oh. has in any toolkit you have. So this lesson I'm doing today, you should be able to do it with Photoshop, Clip Studio, Procreate, Krita. I don't know about paint. I don't think paint has layers. Um, but basically any super, like, modern drawing program. Uh, so we're going to pick out four brushes that you will need for literally anything you tackle in digital. Um, and then we'll go over some shading things to help you out. And then we're going to apply it by doing, which is the fun sketchbook part. And hopefully by the end of tonight, you'll have more confidence with brushes, think more in 3D, and have a better perspective accuracy. So without further ado... Oh, I'm hosted! Thank you! So I found uh, this, this Nerf dart ball, and I started drawing on it. Um... We'll talk about this in just a little bit, because that's going to go in part with the big think. Yes, I'm talking in Gen Z language. I hope you appreciate it. So we're going to talk about the brushes that you need for pretty much any digital venture you choose to do. Um, this brush here is just my go-to uh, brush for, like, literally everything. So in your brush exploration, you want to find a brush that you just really love. And what I love about this brush is that it gives me a wide variety of like pressure sensitivity and also like darkness. The darkness. Um, Would you specifically know if there's a brush similar to that one in Clip Studio or are you just talking in general whatever brush you kind of feel comfortable with that has that good gradient? It um, any any brush that you feel comfortable with that has that good gradient. This one is my preference, but I know across multiple platforms, different brushes are going to feel, you know, better for other people. But in general, you want to find that this brush that gives you this nice gradient is something that you want to have in your digital toolkit for anything. Basically, I these four brushes are going to be... Well, mostly the three are essential to any kind of shading you want to do. Um, I would say if you want help calling out some good brushes, I can definitely help also with Clip Studio specifically because that's all I use. Yeah, I mean, what would you recommend for this kind of brush then, Fair, for Clip I, Studio? I would definitely say because the one that I always use is a Photoshop Mimic, but I believe that was a download. Um, the Clip Studio does have really easy guides on making a Photoshop Mimic, not to mention really good downloads. I would recommend getting one that's just that base one. Um, I use that for all of my line work and some of my uh, coloring. 
but one that comes in that I have actually been liking recently is a dense watercolor. It has a pretty good gradient. It mixes really well too. Um, so that's, that's a pretty good one. Um, but as for just a general drawing one, like I said, a round opacity type of brush, if you can either make it, I don't know if it comes with it anymore. I thought I'd help you out. FYI. I, I appreciate that. I'm making notes here because this document is going to be available for all patrons. So they'll be able to dip in and check it out. And for all you folks watching, you get to see it live. Um, so the next brush that you always want to have in your toolkit. Now I have one that has a soft shade edge, but that's not necessary. You just need a hard round, a good hard round brush. Um, it is amazing how much you're going to do with this good hard round brush and, you know, all the good stuff with it. Just have it in your kit. There's no explanation. Every single program has a good hard round brush. Um, very important. Have it. And then the next one you want to find, and this one was actually hard for me to find and procreate, is a good soft round pressure opacity uh, airbrush. <laughs> Thank you for the follow. This uh, opacity and pressure sensitive uh, airbrush is going to become your best friend uh, for shadows that you need to soften. So these these bad boys are, are going to be your go-tos. Uh, that would be Eclipse Studio Paint, Transparent Watercolor, and Smooth Watercolor. Both are very good at that that soft airbrush look. Transparent very, watercolor? Yeah, transparent watercolor and smooth watercolor are both very good. I would definitely say the watercolor kit in general is very helpful in, in for blending and stuff. That's what I've been playing with lately. Okay, good. Yeah, um, Procreate has the soft airbrush, and that works for it as well. Um, the two, the HB pencil is, or the 600 HB pencil is what I'm finding in Procreate works for my very first brush here. Um, and then the hard round is just in under painting. It's like right there. Okay, and the last one is really something that's of your preference that you want to have in your, your brush kit. And this one here is just a fun texture brush that I found. This can be literally anything. Um, and, and really, you just got to search around and look for something that you like. Um, and, and this is also going to depend on like what you're painting, what you're rendering, per se. Because the first three are going to matter in your like initial blocking in highlights and shadows and things. And then the last brush is going to come in when you want to push a certain idea. Like if you wanted your surface to look like fur, for example, then you'd want to find a very like fur kind of brush. This is where people get like overwhelmed with brushes as they think, oh, I need all of these brushes and I need to use all of them in this one piece. And that's simply not true all the time. Uh, in fact, I'm going to pull up in my next study example uh, some examples of pieces that were done with like literally one brush. And it like doesn't matter. The amount of brushes you use in a piece does not make it better or worse or more interesting. It's just a matter of choice and how photorealistic you want to go. Um, but keep in mind you want those those top three and a fourth that is of your fancy. This is just like some weird splatter painty thing. I like it. Uh, I have like hundreds of others that I could like fool around with. Just find your favorite and roll with it. Um, I'm sure Clip Studio has a bunch of, even in the water, the, the watercolor kit probably has a bunch of fun brushes. Actually, uh, to be honest with you, I noticed that we do not have a lot of that nice texture brush. Uh. Um, probably the closest would be the pastels, but even those, I, there's all of one that I know really kind of has that good kind of gradient feeling, and even I don't use that all the time. 
I would suggest that Clip Studio Paint does have a huge support fan base for um, custom made brushes. Uh, creating the brush is a little difficult, but um, definitely would say check out. They're all pretty much free, um, and it's actually built into the program itself. You can just directly open it up, uh, and there's some uh, not-so-simple directions, but they do make a lot. It just takes a little bit of navigating and getting used to the system, but you can definitely find those kind of textured brushes and play around with whatever you feel like in Clip Studio. Nice. Cool, man. All right, now we're going to go into study time. And uh, this is always a fun adventure. Um, as I was saying with pieces that use, like, one brush, here is an example. And I believe this was done in Procreate um, by Lauren Bolden Art on Twitter. You should follow their work. It's very, very awesome. But as you can see, they use the whole of, like, maybe one or two brushes, and it's an absolutely beautiful piece. Um, I have an example of J.C. Leyendecker here. I'm going to come back to that, because that's going to hit another topic. Here's another piece that used pretty much all hard brushes. Um, except for the sky, it looks like there is some gradient happening out there and some of the ocean. But for the most part, like all of the surface in the beginning is hard brushes. So don't be afraid of hard brushes. Okay, that's going to get into the other part that we want to talk about. So what I wanted to pull this together with is, is the... Surfaces have direction, and they go in different directions, and, you know, as you can even see in this piece, this artist, even though they used a minimum amount of brushes, they conveyed the surface of this cavern here with the direction of their brush strokes. And you want to be mindful about that when you go to render something, or when you're shading anything, really. Um, let's see, where is it? Uh, this eyeball here. This wonderfully hatched eyeball. You can see that the person's strokes, like, went along with the surface of the, uh, the form. And it really doesn't matter what tool they were using to convey that. They're pushing the kind of that idea that this is a three-dimensional surface by making the direction of their shading follow that contour. Uh, the easiest way I can describe it is like wood, like wood has a contour. Um, but even simpler, I mean, I'm sure all of you have gone through this kind of exercise in high school where the teacher's like, draw these absurd, like totally boring shapes and and do them in different mediums. At least that's what my high school art teacher did. She was like, here, you're going to stipple this. And I was like, oh, I, I think I would rather just die. <laughs> I don't want to stipple oh, and God, make all I the like little... Stippling. Oh, I hated it. I ha absolutely hated it. And I just, oh, it was the worst. Um, But the whole, like, point of that was they were trying to get you to think in 3D, and personally, I think they did it bad. Um, <laughs> if my art teacher showed me this, I would under start to understand the shapes in 3D. Um, and when you go in to start drawing, this is kind of how you really have to start thinking about surfaces. And I know it's one of those situations where you're just like, uh, this makes my brain hurt. And it's going to, and that's why you have to start super duper simple and small. You can't just leap into it um, because all of these little sub shapes go into, you know, what this turns out to be when you start drawing your favorite character. And then you realize that, you know, the entire face is really just a 3D mesh that you're trying to visualize in your brain. Um, that makes my brain hurt. But thinking about them in smaller shapes does not. Um, but now it starts to make sense why this eyeball that is clearly just lines everywhere makes sense. 
because they just basically did a mesh around the eye. Um, so even here in Proko's art, like even though his lines aren't necessarily accurate to direction or to a like what a mesh would look like, you get a sense of where forms are and it feels very 3D, especially around the lip area. I believe it's Snoop Dogg. Did an excellent job of Snoop Dogg. So I guess the roundabout point of this is every stroke you make matters. So you want to be very mindful of uh, how you go to make it matter. Okay, now I'm down to my apply it thing. Huzzah! I made a circle earlier, and you can see it's very flat. Are we supposed to make the circle? Hold on, don't make the circle. Let me explain the circle. So, okay. something that helped me start to think of things in three dimensions is like drawing on things. And tracing things. So if you don't have a physical little ball in front of you anywhere, you can just make a circle on your canvas and sort of scope it out. But I like having it in 3D because I can twist it and turn it. So like when I go to draw a face, I always sort of do this sort of thing where I line up like the center of the face and the middle where your eyes would be and it sort of helps where things are going. But if you notice those lines, even if this is held completely at like the vantage point of the horizon, your lines are still, like the lines underneath are gonna be a little bit curved. So if I turn it this way where I have my little curved lines, you can see that these lines above and uh, uh, like below the equator line there, are just a teeny bit curved. So when you look at this on my screen, it looks kind of flat. And that's because none of these lines are showing any curve to them. So even if it's at a dead on angle, you're never ever going to see lines be flat. And something I notice when people start to draw faces is that they leave areas not curved and look flat. And that's where you get your perspective like thrown out and uh, everything gets messy. So if we're gonna play with with this sphere and make it not flat, we're first going to do what's called a little a little alpha lock layer. We're gonna get make use of that hard round brush. So grab yourself that hard round brush <laughs> and stamp yourself a big old circle. It can be any color circle you want. Doesn't matter. Just make a circle. This is gonna be our little Jupiter planet. I've done it. Did you make your planet? Good job. <laughs> <laughs> You're a creator now, good job. I'm an artist now, <laughs> thank God. Okay, and now we're going to alpha lock this bitch. Uh, so I don't know what alpha lock is on Clip Studio. I hope the hell it, it's labeled alpha lock. I don't know even what you're talking about. With okay, alpha. so what alpha lock is, is this is what happens when you draw on a later layer that's not alpha locked. Okay. This is what happens when you draw on a layer while it's alpha locked. You're stopping, yeah, you're stopping from going out the lines like a messy toddler. So it is called Lock Transparent Pixel. Yep. On ours. So it looks pretty much the same, except we have a little lock symbol above yeah. the, uh, uh, what, the checkerboard. <laughs> <laughs> I am a messy toddler, to be fair. I'm just saying. <laughs> So how to do it in Photoshop is the little checkerboard symbol right next to the lock. It's like, I wish I could zoom in on it, but I can't. Um, but you want to make sure that that's 
locked and it's got a little lock on it. I would say clipping masks is a completely different thing. Um, they are helpful, but if you consider in clipping masks, sometimes whenever artists are doing clipping masks, they're doing multiple layers of that clipping mask. And one of the reasons that I would not recommend always doing clipping masks to do the same effect is because if I want to say change the color of one piece of clothing that I put on its own layer in a clipping mask, comparatively to a layer that might be behind it, if I don't put on that transparency lock, it is going to bleed over into the other clips if it's above it. Um, kind of hard to explain without showing it, but there is a difference between actually doing the clipping mask comparatively to the actual transparency lock. You're basically keeping it all locked into one layer uh, rather than splitting it between that grouped layer, if that makes sense. I don't know if that's the same as you would say, Philo, but that is one difference that I would quickly point out. Because, yeah. Uh, yeah. I don't bother with clipping masks. I probably I, should, but I don't. I don't. I don't think I do the same thing as a lot of artists do, but I do know that I sometimes do really like having that clipping mask with uh, CSP because it is super helpful whenever I'm trying to just get that mask block of a figure or yeah. a front part of it. And just be able to quickly run through the parts without having to worry about, you know, making sure every line is specifically where it needs to be. Yeah. So for this, we're going to do real quick. What we want to do is make our new, our little circle here not look flat. Like, this looks like flat. I don't know. It's like a great, it's like a sewer hole. <laughs> There's probably an alligator inside it, like, looking down. But that's no fun. We want to make, like... A very voluptuous orby boy here. It's gonna be thick. So grab um, now. What you could do is try to draw a straight line in the middle there, but I want to be even more interesting here, and I'm gonna throw this. Uh, I'm gonna make it so that the axis of this, like the, the zenith of this planet is like right there and like somewhere underneath it's like the South Pole is over there. The South Pole is down oh. there somewhere. The poles. Yeah, I'm tipping it. This is where the North freaking pole is, right here. And this is where later on our light source is gonna come in for when I'm messing around. So that's that's going to be our poles. Um, and then, so with that, I'm going to draw, like, maybe the closest line to it. The other pole is, like, right there. So this, this is kind of a spinny boy, but sometimes it helps me for the first one to be... Uh, you might need to tilt. Yeah. Photoshop doesn't like to... Uh, draw me a straight line. In fact, I don't need a straight line. We're going to make all these lines kind of curved. Because we want this to read as a round boy. So that is like my up and down axis. And that's like my equator inside there. Uh, I would also mention, <clears throat> for certain curved lines, sometimes it does help me because my hand is stupid. Um, and doing a curved line kind of facing downwards like that, that is a little hard for me. You can easily flip the canvas. Um, and that kind of sometimes, if you rotate it, flip yeah. it, and be able to do that overhand curve, I know sometimes that's easier for me to do those type of curved lines yeah. that Philo is showing here. Or, Oh, Quell. Quell is showing here. <laughs> it's okay. It's my wow. My wow character. It me. Oh my god, I just said that and I still can't do a curve line. Fuck. It's, it's hard. It's, it's even taken me a few tries. I mean, this is me tilting it and trying to be super extra. If you need to do one where it's like facing dead on, you can do that. But let's be real here. Faces that face dead on are not that fun. Um, excuse me, don't call me out like that. <laughs> well, 
What we're really getting at is the coiling method. We're coiling this poor sphere. If you need to draw through it, do it. As, oh, coiling. Is that... Okay. So you're okay. coiling, but you don't have to do like the opposite side. So if you're thinking of the sphere as three-dimensional, there's going to be a line on the other side. But if we're just seeing the line closest to us... Ugh. May even help to just dot. Sometimes if you just need to set up little dots for yourself to figure out where your line should be, do it. What are those called? That's like the children thing. Dipples. Connect the dots. Connect the dots. There we go, connect the dots. I'm a simple person. I like that first term better. Fucking dipples. God, I really messed this up. Go me, I'm the worst teacher. <laughs> We're all learning here. Anyway. You can still already see that this sphere is definitely not flat anymore. Even though my perspective lines are not completely as accurate as one of those cool 3D models. It is most definitely not a flat circle anymore. Just go fast. Sanic fast. No regrets. No Remember regrets. Bob Ross's words, happy little mistakes. Happy accidents, that was his actual words. You see this misplaced dot over here, that's a happy accident. No regrets! Beep. No regrets. No regrets. No rugrats. Wow. Oh, I did it the complete wrong way, Philo. I was... I'm in a different fucking headspace. I suck at drawing balls. Let me tell you this. Once you become an expert in drawing balls, like, faces are gonna be so easy. See, that's the shit that my my art teacher in high school kept telling me. They're like, look, if you can draw this cone perfectly, you will never ever complain about how to draw a nose ever again. And I was just like, sure, Jan. But, you know, then like 20 years later, I'm sitting there and I'm just like, fuck, she was right. And I hate to admit it, but she was right. Anyway. If, you, if you've drawn this and you feel confident that you look at it and it's somewhat 3D, even if it's a bit bumpily, <laughs> then it's okay. Mine's having a hard time. Because <laughs> now, now, if you wanted to take this rocky looking beat up sphere, right? And you're going to take the alpha la layer off. And we're going to turn this sphere into a very ugly gemstone. Because, why not? This thing is just so... Oh, wait, I'm not going to take the alpha lock off just yet, but I will. Because I'm going to take off the... Uh... Oh, yeah, we're erasing things. Yeah, man. It's going to be a very ugly gemstone. In fact, totally gonna take some of these lines and maybe take this one and make a crack there. And then I'll take off the alpha lock and make it just as sharp. I'm also using my hard round brush, by the way. Are we supposed to? Take away some of these lines too. If you'd like to. I'm I'm just doodling. I am trying to follow this along with all of my heart. Oh, I appreciate that. Look at this chunky sphere. And I'm gonna grab like a lighter color. Yeah. And make I'm gonna make it a little bit brighter.
And then I'm going to grab a slightly in-between color. Not quite as bright. And then I'm going to grab maybe a slightly darker color. You're so far ahead me. Oh, shit. Oh, shit. I'm still on the lines of erasing it. And now we have a really ugly rock. Don't call me that. Oh, look at it. It's a really ugly rock. I love this rock. See, this is what you can make of your fucked up gem or your fucked up sphere. Oh, oh my god, how did you get to this step? I literally just erased some choice lines and then turned them into surfaces. Though I messed up and I made the light source in the wrong place. Whoops. The light source is actually up here. Bila, you got into different colors and stuff. I am behind. <laughs> Fuck. Uh, do you want me to do a mini one next to it? Can we go back to the point? I I just got erased the um. I I just erased all the sidelines. Can we go back, teacher? Because <laughs> yes, we can go back. You ready? I'll do the sidelines yeah. again. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. I'm just going to whip through this so it's not going to be accurate at all. Wait, I'm going to do it with a thinner line. And I'm going to back out so that... Oops. Okay. And... All right, right? Here, there's your sphere. We're still using the hard round? Yep, right? I'm still on the hard round. This is entirely hard round. Okay. Let's do this. I'm ready. And you erased lines already? Yeah, I erased the lines. Okay. I got a little poppy looking on the side. This shit is ready. Okay, and let me just erase some lines in here. Okay, and to sort of... I'm just breaking up the different, like... Planes. I'm gonna leave that there. That looks like that would, could be a really cool plane. Um, you might want to take some of these cracks and maybe make a new plane that doesn't necessarily go with the direction. Eh. Eh. Let's try that. Okay, cool. So, now grab, like, I always grab the high contrast colors first. So grab, like, a very light whatever color you have. So something that's way up here in the uh, box, if you're looking at my... Yeah. I'm following. Oops. I got you. And then just, uh, I don't know, make some stuff on the top surface. Just shrink your brush down and just keep it nice and hard. Is our light source going to be coming straight down, right? Yeah, it's straight down. We're just doing straight down, keeping it simple. Also, I know if uh, if there are people that are kind of fresh. I remember I used to draw the um, the actual light source a lot of the time. Like a little sun, you know, and then kind of directional stuff. Sometimes that helps me kind of visualize where the light's going. Here's the light. And then uh, on these planes that are kind of closer to the top, just take a, a hue that's slightly in between the midtone. So, quick question, because I ran into this problem. I made a big surface that was about from the top to almost the bottom. Would that be more of a gradient? Like, how would you kind of handle those? Not things? on a gem. So you need to break it up. Like, just 
when you go like this surface here that I just did, you see my line. I just went and I broke it up with the midtone. And I'm going to do the same thing when I grab the darker tone here. So I'm going to grab like the, uh, I'm actually going to grab this one that's kind of like in the middle here. Also, when I'm picking my colors, I'm going in an arc across my thing. I'm not going straight down. I'm going in an arc. So, and the, the arc is kind of going towards the more saturated end. Okay, so that is my mid-tone. Never mind. I'm going to grab the darker tone, which is down in here. And then these are like the bottom. And these I will probably... Yeah, I'm going to have to split that up just a little bit. Just let me know when you have that done, Fair. I'm the slow one. Am I the pacemaker right now? You are. Thank you for being my pacemaker. That's why I... That's why I'm actually here. <laughs> slow me the heck down. Yeah. I'm really bad at painting, so... That's also why you're here. Yeah. I'm here to learn how to paint. Alright, and then once you have your sphere, I guess all rockified, then you can get fun and just start nipping away some edges. Make sure you nip away edges that make sense. Wait, I thought we nipped away edges before. I mean, you could do it at any point you wish, but okay, I maybe. waited to the end for you. <laughs> I did you did? Good. <laughs> Excellent. Just what I wanted. Oh, honey, this is not looking good for you. This is not a good... What? My thing is looking a little messed up. Well, it's a rock. It's supposed to look ugly. Um, okay, I think I'm at... I think I'm getting into the darks now. I swear I've only got like one more to go. Wait, no, two. Two more. Two more spaces to go. I'm just gonna quickly make... remake mine here just for the sake of uh, examples and people picking this up later. Okay, I think I'm good. I think I got this. I'm locked. Ooh, I dropped mm. my vape. That's a very integral part too. If you're a vapor, you always have to knock down your vape during the art process. <laughs> you gotta use those elbows, guys. Use those elbows, knock down the vapes. Okay, so... As you can see, this lovely hard round brush was fantastic in making a rock. And, yeah. I mean, you never, you don't always have to start out with a sphere to make a rock. Obviously, some rocks are, they come in different flavors, different genders, if you will. This one is spherical. You know, and kind of a gemstone. And we kind of just made something of it with it because just drawing a sphere is, I, I, that's, I think that's a part that annoyed me about those lessons in art class, is they're like, draw a sphere, you'll be able to apply yourself. And then they never actually, like, did anything with it. So. Now we go back. We're going to draw another 
Uh, we're going to draw another sphere. And I'm going to show you with the tools we have how to make an amazing sphere. And these, this is actually really useful. It's like the little spheres I made on the preview image for the stream. Um, these are something that you want to do when you're planning any kind of coloring or shading, and they're called little sphere tests. And it's something I learned with Sam Nielsen in his class for schoolism, and it kind of is a lifesaver when you're really struggling on like lighting schemes or anything. So take out your hard round and stamp yourself a big old circle there. Are we doing gray now? Well, I wanted to do gray. You know what? Here, I'll do... What color do you want it, Fair? I'm fine with gray. I'm good with gray. Okay, you sure? You don't want it to be like really fabulous purple or anything? No, I'm, I'm good with gray. Okay. I, I, gray is a good starting point because you see a lot of things going for right. that and I know a lot of people do learn off that. I don't because I'm a bad artist, but that's fine. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to take this circle, right? And we're going to make it again. And this one, we're going to work on the one that's on top and just, uh, just hide that one, that second one you just made, just hide it underneath. So you just copied the layer. Yeah. That is, Just by the way, hold on to it. I, I don't want to. Just hold on to it. We're, it's going to be useful for us. That's going to be our cast shadow, and I'm going to show you how to cheat it. I have to do everything. You're even renaming it. Uh, yeah. Shoot, I'm bad at naming layers. Yeah, okay. it's actually time to name your layers. Fear. Oh, my hand is in the wrong sphere test, and then we'll... This, the one underneath is cast shadow. I'm hiding it for now. Okay, okay, okay. I'm here with you. I'm okay. Back. We're pretty much done. Sorry, he sneezed. Okay, so. We're gonna grab... Um, we're gonna decide what way our light is going. And for this purpose, let's, uh... Huh. What, lay, what way do we want our light to show? This is where you, you start the sphere test. It's like, okay, this is my piece. Which way is the light going? I'm just going to make a lamp layer. You don't have to. I'm just doing it for me. But if it works for you, do it for you. And you want to make this, like, whatever the light is, the light color, actually. And you know what? We're going to do skylight. It's not actually going to be blue because the sphere is gray, but... Um, I'm going to do it from this angle. I'm going to make it a little sun. A little sun. Oh, you're going over here. Skylight is going to disperse over the surface a lot more gradually than sunlight. And we'll do sunlight after the skylight. Oh, we're doing it. Okay. Yeah. So let's do skylight first. I absolutely have to follow you. I'm trying to be a good student here, Philo. Wow. Yep. So, skylight, yep, that's good, great. Um, we're not going to use the blue just yet. We're going to go in and take care of our shadow. Now I want you to hop onto your big, soft, round pressure opacity and make that fucker thick. Thick. And I want you to zoom out, and you're literally just going to stroke... Oop. I'm bad. I didn't have my alpha lock layer on. I'm going to make sure that I have my alpha lock layer on on that sphere test layer. Got your alpha lock layer on? Yes. All right. Now just swipe across the bottom there. In fact, I'm going to make it just a teeny bit smaller. Boom. One swipe magic. And then I'm going to grab... The key to this is finding the right size. My uh, brush size is just a little bit smaller than the actual sphere. And it's just literally a swipe through the middle. Now, if the skylight was going to be at a different angle, then obviously I would go lower or higher or what have you. But this Wait, is for... Are you using the airbrush right now? Because that looks like the airbrush. Yes. I just said swap to your big thick airbrush. 
Swap and make uh, it thick. I, I'm trying. I'll make it darker for me. Oh. How thick is it? It's pretty thick. Alright, make sure that it's not, like, bigger than the circle itself. Just make it a little bit smaller than the circle. It is a little bit smaller than the circle. All right. It would as smooth as yours. <laughs> eh, it's okay. Just do a big swipe. And then you're going to go up and grab something uh, kind of like in this vicinity. And you're going to do the same thing, but on the opposite side. So swipe. Man, that's fantastic. Look at that. It's almost like a perfect sphere. I mean, this isn't yet going into texture or anything. This is the kind of, like, surface that's very smooth and satiny. So something you might want to use for clothing or, like, a broad stretch of clothing that doesn't have any wrinkles or anything in it. Now we're going to grab that other sphere. <laughs> and we're going to alpha lock it. And then we're going to play the skew game. Oops. Where I have to actually hold down shift because this is Photoshop CC and I hate it. And depending on how that light is cast how deeply that's gonna sit. Boom! Look at that! Instant cast shadow. Who to thunk? And to make sure that it's especially cast shadow, we're gonna do something that uh, targets the... Uh, what is it called? Ambient occlusion, which is the darkest part of a shadow. And that's going to go in the cast shadow right where the sphere touches the surface. I'm still on my big soft brush, but I'm just like making that soft area only touch right underneath of it. Mine was so not as smooth as yours because the brushes. Yeah, well. Okay. That's. Oh, my, but I just, oh, there is airbrushes. Shit. Shit, grab the airbrush. How's everybody in the chat doing? Are you, are you doing spheres with us? Laz better be doing it. <laughs> that is the laugh of a guilty man <laughs> not doing his homework. What do you mean? He's playing Final Fantasy. <laughs> they should be all play Final Fantasy. I think I called out. I mean, is it a call out though? Because his response is all for laughing. I swear we're gonna get to the fun part. We're just waiting for Fair to catch up. It's very important. Damn. I'm Damn. Here. I'm here. I'm here. I just, Are you here? I realize, belatedly, there is airbrushes in Clip Studio Paint, but because, again, I'm so used to my brushes, I forgot about it. And yeah. That's happening in the back of my thing. So. There is a very base set. Um, you want to use the soft airbrush, obviously, like Quell was saying. <laughs> Training myself. Training my big tooth. Okay, but I'm I'm. Oh wait, you did white on that, didn't you? The cast shadow. I did. Yeah. Oh well. No, I, I didn't do white on the cast shadow. I just did. I'm gonna uh, take that one back. Okay. I'm here. I'm ready. Anyway, it's just about done. Unless you're about to have, like, a sunlight source, 
which will brighten up uh, the highlight here. And this, I just like, I'll grab something bright depending on the intensity of the light. If the, the factor that determines whether or not you'll get uh, specular light, which is like the little dot or whatever on the, the highlight, is A, how shiny the surface is and how reflective it is, and B, how close the light source is. Um, so if the if it's skylight, you're typically not going to see like a huge specular light, but you might see, and I just do a little dab, and you know, it's a little bit bright right there. Just do a little dab and boom. There you go. That's done. You just do a little dab. <laughs> dab of the bright and bam, that one is almost done. There's one more light source we have to think about. And that light source is called bounce light. And so depending on where this sphere is sitting, it looks like it's sitting on a white surface, we're going to get a little bit of bounce light on the under butt here of the sphere, and it's going to be super subtle. A little subtle. Just a little subtle. That's why it's really important to have an airbrush for this. Oh, that was not subtle. Oh, that's not subtle. Okay. Subtlety. I got it. Sub Wait, no. <laughs> I I made a subtle one. I think. You Maybe. think? I think. <laughs> Good job. Now, also, um, can uh, can you kind of talk about the distance of the light and the way that it affects kind of the shadows and the light and everything? Because I know you were talking about it depends on how close it is uh, that would really bring out certain like shiny bits and everything. But what about just on a plain surface as if it was just this normal texture? Like how different would the shadows be farther away to closer away? And how would you kind of manage that? Yeah, so when it's further away, you're going to see less of a cast shadow. Cast shadows only occur really when like the light is intense. And in this case, it looks very intense, but like, let's see, if we're experiencing a light that is not intense, let me just make a copy of this. Uh, I'm trying to really quickly help Zarya. Um, oh god, why does it keep going away? Uh, I don't know if Zarya can hear me, but if you can, I'll type it in chat too. But in Clip Studio Paint, if you go to your pens, I was using for the hard brush actually my turnip pen. I think that is a base brush. Um, but no matter what, all of the pens should be able to give you that hard round. I don't think I mentioned it because we kind of brushed over that one, but that is kind of the one that I lay down any hard colors that I need so to make those circles and everything. Okay, so with a less intense light, you're going to see less uh, intense, like everything's going to go down. And then your cast shadow isn't necessarily going to be as powerful. And this I kind of didn't. Oh, I need to make sure my eraser is also on soft for this. Like, you're not even going to see, like, a defined circle underneath at that point. Like, you'll get a little bit of the uh, ambient occlusion. Which, ambient occlusion, I'm going to do a whole freaking lesson on that. Because uh, we get taught very early on, or at least we assume very early on, that ambient occlusion... Or, or that lines kind of make up for ambient occlusion. And the thing is, is, like, it... You don't see lines in real life, but the lines that we see are kind of... So like this sphere right here, you see how the, the shadow is a lot more subtle? That's a light source that's farther away. And then like if you wanted something that was super <laughs> duper intense, then what will happen is that this cast shadow 
will elongate. I mean, depending on the angle. Um, another thing that I'm forgetting to mention here is that when we talk about like the direction of the light, you want to make sure that your cast shadow is uh, parallel to the light source. Oh, I need to get the right brush for this. So when you go to do a cast shadow, you want to make sure that the edges are parallel. And you see that I can already see that my cast shadow is not accurate here. It should be out here. Let me see if I can adjust that. So that right there is a test. If you are not sure if your shit is parallel, Nice in. I know, it does that. If you're not if sure you're not your shit is parallel, then do a parallelogram to the light if, source and then if you adjust. Have a straight line in CSP, by the way. Um, I don't know if it's the same in Photoshop, but I know I struggle making straight lines because I have shaky hands. Um, you can just shift click and it will draw a line from your last little. Uh, point that you drew. So you can just do a little point where you want to start the line, press shift, hold it down, follow the line, and we'll make a completely straight line. That does help a lot with me. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it's the same. It's the same. Well. You hold down shift. Okay, so I just corrected my cast shadow in this piece. So if you're ever concerned with the way a cast shadow, like how long it should be or whatever, then um, use the parallel line trick. So if theoretically the light was coming directly from above, then those lines would be touching the edges of the... They would be directly underneath the sphere. <clears throat> so like this one, this cast shadow, if I wanted to make sure that it was lined up, if I wanted to change the direction of the light to being completely overhead. I don't know why this makes an N every time I do it. I hate that. Are you, well, that might be because your. Did you make a new point whenever you did it? I did. Well, you know, maybe it's just broken. <laughs> maybe it is. And then I'll get my big soft one and fix the ambient occlusion. I know also something that might want to be brought up is whenever we were talking about more distant light sources, um, the more distance it is, and it's really good, you can see it whenever you're looking at shadows of yourself in some sunlight, you'll notice that I think you mentioned it where like you don't see a lot of lines in real life. The only times you're seeing those hard lines is usually if you're really close to that surface or you have that light like really close and the surface it's shining off is very close as well. The farther you go from, you know, the light or the surface itself with the light, the more it's going to kind of disperse the shadow, just like light kind of disperses itself. And a way that you can really show that is with um, either you can kind of erase it. Uh, I know that I like to erase things, so I do erasing. I don't know what you do, Pila. I know you probably do the same thing where it's kind of like you do a lighter color to make it seem like softer lines because like as you go farther, there is a little bit of uh, dispersing of yeah. shadows and light. 
And like I said, a really good example, I would say, is to look and kind of test it yourself with taking a light and looking at your own shadow. Just hold up your hand or some object if you want and just kind of see the differences of distance and with the light and everything. That really helps to kind of get a good gauge of where it is and how far it is and everything like that. But mostly for like the beginning of your stuff, I know that usually it's a pretty direct light, isn't it, Philo? Yeah, it is. Here's what it looks like if it was, like, top-down. See how, like, the bounce light, you get, you're getting bounce light down here and right here. By the way, Philo, if you want me to stop talking at any point, you can tell me to shut up. <laughs> you are very helpful, thank you. I have all of these great ideas, but sometimes I'm a little bit unorganized, and you are helping me with the pace. Thank you for uh, hurting my ADHD sheep. <laughs> this is what makes me an artist. <laughs> you also want to explain, because whenever you're doing the bounce shadow, you're kind of doing it over that direct shadow with your cast shadow. There we go. You're doing it directly over the dark part of the cast shadow. Can you explain why the bounce light is directly over that cast shadow, like that dark part of the cast shadow? and how it kind of works that way. Like, why is it lighter on the very bottom there, and how does it work with the cast? It's very bottom, because the light is coming down here. It, it, you know, it's it's coming down onto the surface, and whatever surface this is, like, if the surface was red, then the bounce light would be red. Like, bounce light... I, you know what? A really good example of bounce light... <laughs> is in one of my recent uh, pieces, my fan art. Hold on here. Let me pull it up and I'll explain to you what the uh, the bounce light is. If you see, you look really closely here on his hand, the bounce light, the light is bouncing off the mask onto his hand and that's why I made those parts of his hand red like that. So whatever surfaces are closer in proximity to, you're always going to get bounce light, especially the brighter the light that it is. Um, if it's a dark light, you might not see it so much, but it really matters, and it can really push the threshold of um, what that light and what that piece says, what it communicates when you use bounce light. I think it would also be, if it's a darker color, does it still create that bounce light? Like, if it's a really dark color, let's just use black for an example. If yeah. there's light coming against a black object, is it going to create a bounce shadow because it's such a dark color? In oh, the way it, that it absolutely reacts? will. I mean, yeah. it depends on the surface. Like, if you have one of those, like, total camouflage things that like really just absorb light like black obviously is going to be the hardest to see any kind of um i'm challenging you you are challenging me so if i go with a super duper dark navy blue here oh that is not what i wanted that is an eraser super dark navy blue here right um, but we're on a white surface, you're still going to see, and of course I'm curving in on my... Yeah, you're still gonna get, you're still gonna get some white bounce light. And what if the actual surface it's sitting on is a dark color like that? So then you won't see it. I mean, okay. if it's on a black surface, it's not gonna show it. But okay. that's see, that's what makes a photograph bad. Like when you try to photograph dark on dark, it doesn't stand out because there's nothing for the light to bounce off of. That's why photographers make conscious d decisions to make it like you know position things against contrasting uh surfaces so yeah if that makes sense 
Um, would you say a really good example? Because I know I've probably seen it on all of my aesthetic blogs, but if you had to kind of get a really good, like strong, like how I was saying with the shadows and showing the difference of distance and how it reacts with the lighting, would you say a good way to show the balanced lighting would be something like a mirror maybe or anything like, is there a good example to really get a strong balanced light that you can study in real life? Um, um, well, a mirror is entirely like accurately bounce light. You're literally like looking at a reflection. So I wouldn't recommend that. Um, good bounce light stuff could be anything. It starts to get complicated when you get into translucent, uh, like textures and, um, objects because you're, the light is bouncing like everywhere. Honestly, like just satin things um like even this little ball here i can see bounce light happening from my uh lighter table down here like just even a tennis ball you can take a tennis ball and put it under something that's bright and you'll see bounce light um like it I would study bounce light in that regard first before getting into super highly reflective surfaces because reflective surfaces are going to pull in uh, some really extreme bounce light. I can try to pull up um, some of... Did I? Oh, I did it in the schoolism. Like I did, this was one of the assignments in schoolism where you can see this like bounce light from the green coming up on the red here. And then we have bounce light coming from this weird crack inside this bit here going onto this weird bleeding sphere that I drew. <laughs> um, but yeah, that bounce light is like happening all around the bottom surfaces here. So I don't know, like kind of matte or somewhat shiny semi-gloss surfaces will be good for studying bounce light. I would not suggest mirror or uh, reflective surfaces just yet. That's like step two. Once you get your bounce light master, then you can go on to super duper shiny things for fun. All right, the part that I wanted to get to tonight, at least to let us have fun and fuck around, is just taking these spheres and taking our texture brushes and just making things with it. Um, this, I took this brush up here, this texture brush I have, and I kind of made some kind of moon with it. Um, so as long as you know how to start off with, uh, you know, your, your basic shape there, then have at it Hoss, like make some fun spheres and even what I might do here is combine some spheres to make some interesting shapes because I mean what are we even but combined spherical shapes tubular tubular I think what we'll do since we're Closing, we only have like 45 minutes left, is uh, we will talk about the coiling method perhaps next week. And the coiling method can super duper help you with uh, any kind of surface stuff. And it's really, really helpful for doing anything with drawing bodies. But for now, let's make some weird planets and things. I'm gonna make some weird planets. I'm gonna alpha lock that. I'm not gonna worry about cast shadows because you know what? Cast shadows just stress me out. I showed you how to do one the cheap way. But now I'm gonna get my texture brushes and I'm gonna break into some color here. Uh, I'm gonna make a furry orb. A furry orb. Laz, do you hear me? I'm making a furry orb. Two furry orbs. Take. And I'm going to start with... Uh, I'm going to make my... Let's make my uh, light source known. And I'm going to actually make my light source color here. I'm going to actually go with 
a skylight, so it's going to be blue. It's going to be blue. It's going to come from that direction. I'm going to alpha lock that shit. And go back to my color here, and I'm following the curve. Get in my darker colors with my big swooping, swooshy brush. Soft airbrush. This is just establishing the uh, darker shadow there, and then I'm going to come up my curve here. And then, once I get this sort of established, then I can get in to start playing with my texture brushes. Um, actually, I'm going to add a little bit of blue to it, because again, we're doing blue skylight, so that blue is going to reflect. I could wait to do the blue and do the blue on a lighten layer, but I want to get just a little hint of blue down in my base shading, and this is okay to do. You see how it kind of grays it up a little bit, but that's okay. Some blue. All right, now we're ready to get furry. I'm going to find a fuzzy brush that I enjoy. Do I want this one? Let's see. No, I don't want that one, because that will take me forever. What is this one? Are you starting in texture brushes, or are we still on airbrush? Oh, I'm, I use the airbrush to lay down my foundation of where mm -hmm. my light's going. Of your blue? Yep, I did. I just dabbed a little bit of blue on. So I'm going to use that to sample underneath. In fact, I could jump up on another layer to do this texture part. Um, and if it's easier for you to do that, do it. But if it's not, then just have at it. I'm just trying to find, yes, a fuzzy brush. Uh, let me see if I can translate this into one of the base brushes for us. It doesn't have, you don't have to have a furry brush. I'm just. I'm trying to find one with just straight texture. That's the problem. Um. In fact, I'm actually going to back away from my texture and actually go back to my comfortable brush to sort of lay out the chunks if I'm doing hair. Anytime you're doing hair, start off with your most comfortable brush. Uh, for the people using Clip Studio Paint, there is a really good texture brush and a few that have texture that is in the pencil category. There's mechanical pencil, uh, design pencil, real pencil might all be in the base. I'm not completely sure because I think I have a few that I downloaded. But I know for a fact mechanical pencil should be in there by itself, and that does have a pretty good texture that you can use for this. Are we doing darker colors than our darkest, or is it the same color as the darkest for this? Um, I grabbed something a little bit darker for the ambient occlusion, but obviously it's not going to be too terribly dark the further up. So, so actually, yeah. Are we sampling it kind of? Hmm? Are we kind of sampling it the further up? The yeah, we're, we're sampling. Um, and I'm using a brush that just my pressure being really light is like helping me out. That So I'm, I'm working on my comfy brush right now. And then I will get into texture brushes a little bit later, I think. So you get so to just make decisions on the fly. I notice you're kind of doing like V shapes. Is that kind of what you would recommend for fur or are you just kind of going with whatever shape? I'm doing want? shaggy fur right now. So that's what I would recommend. I, I'm anytime you do fur or hair or anything, you need to piece it in clumps and it needs to be clumps that are organic and messy and have no rhyme or reason or pattern to them unless it's like neatly kept hair. But even so, like, if you draw every single hair, or try to draw every single hair, you're gonna fuck it up. Because even, like, the most hairsprayed white lady hair you can think of has, like, different curves and stuff. Yes, I did explain it that way. Karen and your, your hair. 
I'm gonna try to do like maybe shorter hair on this one. I'm doing hair. You folks don't have to do hair. You can do any sketching, any kind of surface. Notice how my lines are moving in a direction here. You see how I'm kind of thinking about my sphere? This is really important just to make sure that you're thinking. And if you're struggling with this, what you can do is you can pop up on another layer on top and just kind of make yourself some guidelines. Even if they're extra shitty guidelines, you want to make sure that they're... The more accurate your guidelines, the more accurate your painting is going to be. Because if this was a face, then you would want to make sure that everything was lined up. I was say, this mechanical pixel is really working some favors into this texture. Da -da 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 -da. Learn something new every day. So if you need help, make your little lines on top and kind of... You can make them kind of invisible. But if you, you definitely want to make sure that you're capturing the curve of the surface. Or else we don't want any flat, hairy circles. Flat fur planets. Now that I got my comfy brush done, I can get in with some other texture favorites. To pull off what I want. Now, I just finished the second furry planet. Oh, I mean, I'm still on my furry planet. Uh, you're doing wider lines now over it. Oh, well, I made myself a little guideline. See, this is what they look like at full yeah. opacity. I made myself a guideline so that I make sure that my furry planets look three dimensional and not like flat furry planets. Yeah. I mean, you don't have to do that, but it helps. And then what's the next step? Oh, well, I'm just, the next step is just rendering. So just kind of going back through and pulling lighter, darker, kind of how are you rendering this right now? Um, I am just uh, sampling and kind of just creating that texture so I'm going in and sort of weaving things around so it's like a blending a, a manual blending if as you will I think with fur too whenever you have that like parts are sticking up so it's good to consider also like if there's one if there's a hair that's sticking out far that might catch a light too, would it not? Yeah, that's that's detail. We're not getting to that just yet. No, I, I like detail. No, you cannot start detail too soon because then you'll be like, ooh, I did this really pretty detail and you'll get distracted and your lizard brain will just be distracted on that one little mm. detail. They're and being distracted. That doesn't sound realistic at all. Is this a lesson or a read? <laughs> <laughs> No getting she distracted. Gets so distracted with, she gets so distracted whenever she's drawing, she'll go off on one thing, like the foot, 
or the hand. Hey, hey, this is not, this is a lesson. There are other people here. Do not read me like this. We're learning by your mistakes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't agree with me. Okay, I think I'm still in this. I think I'm still in this game. Wait. No. Mine does not look anything like you. <laughs> oh my god. Why do you keep getting lost? I'm not lost. I just think I'm doing tinier strokes. <laughs> Don't. Just keep it broad and go littler and littler each time. I think I got to the detailed part. I think I got to the detailed part. There ain't no way you got to the detail part. I'm not even there yet. I think I did because I did such small strokes. Oh my god. Can we take a gander at this? Uh, I'm, I feel self-conscious and I don't feel safe in the street. <laughs> <laughs> like, here, I'll share it into the Patreon Discord. Yeah, oh, do that. <laughs> I can't oh, see that, I'm a stranger. Well, Philo can open it if she wants to read me. I will gladly... Wait, where am I posting this? Our oh, study night here. Yeah, put it in there. Oh. That there. goes for other Patreon people following. Oh, pretty good. See, I told you. I think I went for detailing too quickly. Philo, read me. Yeah, you went to detail too quickly. <laughs> you, have, you have to darken up the bottom a bit, like... I don't know if it's because it's on your screen and Max do that. They, like, darken it up. But it's a good start. Now render. Now you want to pull in the contrast. See, I don't want to detail like that until I get to, like, the contrast part. I think another problem I had was I was still zoomed out to fucking bumfuck nowhere. So. Yep, zoom. Of... start zooming in. Yeah, I did not do so you talked about broad strokes, and I was just like, nah, I'm gonna stay out here. And Well, I mean, it's still good to go broad, but... Oh, bye. Bye. Something else that can help if you're struggling with contrast is you can start to play with some layer modes. So, like I was saying earlier about a lighten layer to sort of capture what I was thinking about for the light. I might go in and do that soon. Oh, this is just like getting worse and worse as I try to fix this. Jay. Hey, just swipe it, start over. I am not starting this over. <laughs> well, some sometimes, no, it's never too late. You're eight hours in now. Now you have to start over. <laughs> I'm living with my happy mistakes. I live by Bob Ross. I can fix this somehow. If it's a happy mistake, why don't you just leave it be? <laughs> she has a point. You know what? I don't like this commentary. Your words, not mine. When you're done fixing your mistakes, it's your point. Yeah, I know. I know. That's another problem, is I'm sitting here trying to roleplay while doing this. I am distracted. Oh! It means a lot that you are here. Man, you got these big patches. I look like a fucking mess. Shit. Okay, I'm gonna pop up onto Light and Layer to get this 
sky better because hair is shiny and shiny surfaces can have some decent skylight to it. Wrong brush. Man, I'm excited to see other people's furry planets. Or scaly planets. Bad joke, bad joke. Huh? like Harris even Just gonna combine that. Then I think what I will do is pop up on an overlay layer to pull the highlight out some more. <coughs> Does anybody watching have any questions? Y'all are so quiet. They're drawing. That's true. Silence means work. Running Ifrit while watching. I mean, I too am looking forward to playing Final Fantasy after this, but I wanted to do this. I pay a whole dollar to be here. I expect the full package. Uh, I'm giving you the full package. I waited for you. Damn. Damn. Hold the fuck out. <laughs> this is just Reed Fair Day. It feels like it. I mean, you deserve it, so. Oh, well, at least Philo isn't on the second planet yet. I'm still on fucking triangles. Like, fuck but I'm not even on the second planet yet. And that's what I was just saying. I was on the book. I'm just, I'm just saying. I'm glad that you're not there yet. I kind of fucked up a little bit on the way, but I'm making it back. <laughs> Come back. So Yes, we are going to be erasing away edges of our furry planet. Um, what that is called, officially in the industry, I suppose, is uh, breaking the silhouette. And we will absolutely be doing that. Right now I'm just like trying to get the... Uh, trying to establish the feel and the, the light source and... Um, Kind of the textury bits. Breaking the silhouette is typically one of the later things to do, though you can absolutely do it at any point. And uh, what I'm doing right at this moment is I'm on an overlay layer. Um, sometimes when I'm struggling to pick out a highlight color, I'll pop up on an overlay layer and kind of pull out those brights. And because it is a blue light source, I'm working in the blues here. Kind of doing like anime hair feel. Whenever I see these spheres of textures, because I always see artists do them, it just makes me feel so uncomfortable because I feel like I'm going to be holding a ball of hair. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. It has like wet dog hair texture going on. Yeah, that's why I'm just like, hmm. Okay, I'm going to merge that. I'm just merging my layers. That's how bold I am right now. Are you feeling bold there? 
No, I'm still on the triangle. <laughs> so far behind right now. Because you told me I was wrong and I went to detailing first because I'm a fool. Yeah. I needed this You're hubless. I can't fucking paint this shit. I'm really bad at painting. Take You're care. really bad at being patient. Yeah. I want it done. But that, you you can't that be little like that. Your point. I'm still accidentally detailing. I have to hide this. You have to tell your inner gremlin that you're not going to finish this in the next five minutes. And if your I... inner gremlin throws a tantrum, then you throw your inner gremlin out. I believe it. throws out the whole last thing. Yeah, she is the inner gremlin. Yeah, she is the inner gremlin. She'd have to throw herself out. Like, her whole body. Just everything. Your entire body. Okay, now that I have pretty much established... What I want to do with this... I'm gonna kill this layer because I don't want it anymore. And on this new layer, I'm gonna zoom in and start doing the rendering. Which is just the fine detailing of bits. Smaller clumps. I know it's gross to think of hair and clumps. I just don't like the word clumps. It's like one of those cursed words like moist. I hate the word moist. Moist I don't clumps. Understand. I don't understand the psychology of the hatred against moist. I don't like it's not a good word to say. It doesn't feel great. It makes makes You me aren't feel a good gross. word to say. No, I'm not a good word to say. Say my name three times and I show up behind you. No one wants that. I would. <laughs> like one of those mobs <laughs> in the dungeon. The big stompy boys. Stompy boys, that's me. I'm a big stompy boy. No, fuck this. <laughs> no, you're getting impatient. Are you giving up on the art lesson? No, I'm not. I'm just... Angry? Anger is part of the learning. Because you have to be patient. That's a that's a yes, boys. Yes. Do you think these furry plants would be hard when you squeeze on it? Would it be like really squishy? I want to imagine they're squishy. I don't want to imagine they're anything. <laughs> I want to imagine. Oh my god! Like the like the two dollar like squeeze balls from like the ninety nine store. Oh, stop. except it's not a koosh ball; it's a hair ball. <laughs> <sighs> <laughs> That's the real pigeon toy right there. <laughs> Why must we discuss this? Because it's the the hour to be cryptid. Uh, Witching hour has occurred. God. <laughs> I think my mom is more worried than she let on because she is texting me way more than she usually does. Aww. Just with like little, not, she's not texting me with like, are you okay? How are you doing? She's just like, I'm watching a show and I'm, you know, you would like this show and oh my God, I just made chocolate chip cookies. I'm like, oh, ma, ma, ma. <laughs> mom, please. Yeah, I think she's just, I think she's a little shaken up all the way across the world. Well, country. My mom has sent me a single text once in her 60 year old year life. My mom usually texts me when she needs help figuring out what movie somebody was in. I wish my mom <laughs> was in me. Oh, shit. That's such a. God damn it, Philo. What? Look, see, I'm not bitching, I'm not complaining, and I'm going at my own pace, super slow. Go at your own pace. Maybe you just need to accept that your pace is a little bit slower, and that's okay. 
I don't want to accept that. Accept it. Accept the compliments. Would you say that to Bob Ross? I would. That's a hard question to answer, and I feel very much. Like Bob that. Ross is like Art Jesus. You can't disappoint him. Oh, she's. I feel like Fair would get into a fucking fight with Bob Ross. <laughs> Fair would get into a fight with anybody. Accurate. Oh, my mom was telling me apparently she made cookies and she keeps eating the dough. Me too. And so she's like, I'm trying to make cookies and she's failing at it because now she doesn't have enough dough left to make the fucking cookies. <laughs> she make like one cookie. <laughs> <laughs> apparently there it's not chocolate chip cookies, it's chocolate cookies. Ooh. And, and so she she keeps eating the dough and she her hubris. I don't get the hype of cookie dough, but I'm also the person that burns their cookies, so... Yeah, you're it. disgusting. You don't have any room to I here. love cancer. You fucking stop. I'm like her where I don't... Let, I, If I'm making cookies or brownies or anything like that, like... It is a miracle if that dough makes it in the oven. <laughs> we are two sides of the same chest. <laughs> you want it very much cooked. I don't want it cooked at all. Like, give me that salmonella, dude. I don't like your Chewbacca ball. It makes me like, <laughs> like Chewbacca I said, I didn't, ball. Like I, I, like I have phantom feelings in my hand of holding this Chewbacca stress ball. The Baca ball. The Baca I keep ball. Imagining Baca. How, like, silky it feels. And yeah. That's, that's a comfort to my life. It's not a comfort to me. It's like making my hands sweaty. I want to pet it. Of course you do. <laughs> you probably want to wear it. I mean... yeah. <laughs> How would you wear it? I'm kind of I'm thinking of like, that fucking blueberry from Willy Wonka. <laughs> yes, exactly it. that. <laughs> so, do you know how crafter moms like make necklaces out of everything? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Oh, dislike. I don't like where you're going with this, but yes. This is going into grounds that PETA will not approve of. <laughs> <laughs> five minute are, crafts are, are you going to continue what you were saying or are you just going <laughs> to leave that out there okay she, she was saying that they were going to make it out of that I understood I mean, I understood, but she also has a tendency to just drop things and never come back to them. Oh, absolutely, but that is also something that I do that irritates you, so. Alright. Fuck, I hate when you do that. I know, it's great. So, my ball doesn't look anything like yours, but I accept it. Good, then you have learned. What does I... that mean? What does your ball look like? It looks nothing like Elo's. I don't want to talk about it right now. I don't want to talk. You don't want to talk but about your balls. You're supposed to talk about it. Um. Well, mine is not. Mine is not little clumps. Let me just tell you. Yeah, mine is not clumpy. Mine is it, like. It's a different breed. Well, different the important breed. part like that. is that it is. It looks three dimensional. If it looks three dimensional, then you have achieved greatness I, on this night. I think it looks three dimensional enough. Maybe. The way I mean, you put emphasis on that you see that makes me scared. Like, it's, it's somehow this not consistent between other people's perspectives. Hair isn't perfect, and neither am I, so... I want to brush the ball. <laughs> Oh, 
you know like those gloves that have like the animal brushes on them so you yeah. just like pet your dog furiously yes that's it that's just that's just yeah it. yeah i want to do that to the ball <laughs> Oh, it's getting lumpy! <laughs> of course it's gonna get lumpy. Oh, I feel yeah. it more in my hand. Are we taking it away now? Like, are we... Are yeah, we... I'm breaking up the silhouette. Oh, bye. This is looking very close to a fucked up tomato. <laughs> Oh, God, if it was changed to red, it would be a furry tomato. Ah, uh, tomato. That's I like could do that. Don't do that to us. <laughs> Don't play God. <laughs> you're, t you're taunting me, and I have the power of Photoshop in my hands. So are Wait. we erasing it now? Are we keeping the lock transparency on for this part or no? Um, oh, no, I turned it off. Look at you doing extra lines and stuff. Well, yeah, because you're going to have stray hands. Are you using a hard round brush to take away, or are you just using the same brush? Um, I have a hard round brush that I'm taking away, but I'm also adding back in with my super comfortable sketchy brush. Because hair is translucent. I don't like that it looks like it. there's like a toupee on the top. <laughs> <laughs> Charm ball. I like your art, ball. but the ball just makes me feel things. Just this disembodied ball. It's just a shaggy dog. Just like imagine that it's the back of like an anime character's head. Let's see, this is how you practice it without actually drawing the anime character's head. <laughs> okay, now we go back to the super comfy brush. Uh, I think I'm going to take my other ball and make it a rock ball or a stone ball. Because I'm kind of sick of hair. Ball. A stoner ball, yeah. Let's see. I like this rocky... Ah! I forgot. I don't have El Palapa. Oh. Where's Melly, by the way? Hmm? Melly. Uh, Did she have to go to her parents' house? Yeah. How dare she? How dare she see her family? We are her only family now. Well, no. <laughs> she's at her mom's house uh, watching this puppy that her mom got. This one is going to be a weird moon. <clears throat> this feels weird. I'm still on the furry one. Ouch. Bye. I don't work tomorrow, so I don't have to go to bed. But oh, as do. Hmm. Yeah, I gotta go take a shower in about like 20 minutes. Hmm. I actually decided that I don't want to do that. And I want to make something more disgusting. Oh. That's <laughs> a comfort. <laughs> make a nightmare. Oh. I'm gonna make a... 
I'm gonna make a glowy surface. Kind of like a... I don't know. It looks like a bug. A potion bottle Ooh, that'd be thing. Cool. Yeah, I'm a potion. Anime potion, yeah. Well, I said stamina, but that works too. Yeah. Stamina potion, because it's green, right? <laughs> this is part of the art lesson, y'all. Pay close attention. I have to pee. No, you're not allowed. I'm, I'm scared you're gonna fucking blast through some <laughs> shit and I'm gonna be left behind. I want a pee break. Art doesn't wait for pee break. No, go pee. It's important to take care of yourself. You see, you see how disappointed Fila sounds in me for not being able to hold my bladder. This one is going to be on a light layer, hell yeah. Okay, I finished the hairball. <laughs> I'm going to go for a beat break. <laughs> I, I earned it for doing all that. Yes, you did. Good job. I was saying, are you taking a trip downstairs? Oh, I was gonna ask if you could bring my food down there. Hold on, I'm coming. Ah, uh, marriage. Trying to make the highlight here a little bit more 3D. Okay, so next problem I have, what are we doing with the second ball? Um, oh. I'm making a very shiny glass mm. ball with it. Oh! I was just doing this on my last picture, actually. I was trying really hard. So what I'm using right now is a lighten layer, and I'm using a really obnoxious blue to kind of uh, make that skylight shine, I guess, on it. The more I look at your fur ball, the more I'm like, mine looks like me whenever I get out of bed, comparatively to like someone that does their hair. Yeah. But I think it reflects our style changes, like, the difference between my style and yours. I think it reflects that pretty well. 
Well, that's Yours good. Is rendered. Mine is just a hot mess. You'll get there, fair. I'm here to learn how to paint. I'm sitting here trying to do this without a reference, and it's showing. This is uh, my super cartoony uh ball. Wait, is everybody off of the fur ball now? Cause I, I was stuck on that for a while. I think. Well, I'm. I don't know. Am I the one that's the problem? No. I'll wave. Thanks. You're welcome. I just ate a piece of, like, stale cake, but it tasted so good. It sounds like cake you stole for. Yes, it is the cake that I stole. <laughs> just trying to make some semblance of a reflective... Actually, I hate this. <laughs> what a mood! Look, see, even I'm not immune to freaking frustration. Nobody is immune to frustration. Think you're immune? Think again. Think you're immune? Watch yourself. Ten surprising facts about artists. Wait, where is my other Clip Studio paint friend? She seemed like she was on the same step as me. No! Oh. <laughs> no, she's going to bed! <laughs> Speak of the devil. Thank you. I'm glad that it was helpful. Thanks for coming out. I know it was a little bit all over the place, but I want to hopefully do this every week on Monday. I don't know if Fair will join us every Monday or not, but try to help out just because like I said I'm pretty good with Clip Studio so maybe I can help out with translating it to other programs and stuff. Yeah, I appreciate that. I'm gonna try Color Dodge. That might work out a little bit better. Then... I don't know how you started this glass so I'm like just gonna sit here and watch. How I started, I started with just like a circle and I put a little bit of blue inside. I'm so glad to hear that people are having a blast with it and getting out of their <laughs> comfort I zones. So far out of my comfort zone right now. I mean, the fur texture, that's like a thing that will. Oh, thank you for the follow. Um, the fur texture is something we'll get in in a later week, and, uh, like, I wanted to try and touch on more of the shading in a direction thing, um, which will help you when it comes to hair and fur and stuff, so don't worry, there'll be, like, a whole separate night where we'll just go to town on, uh, different textures and things. This, I wanted to, you to take away from it, uh, just general, like, thinking in three dimensions and, uh, being able to take it and just apply it, like, go ham with it. Don't be afraid to break up your circle and to also sort of dip your toes into using the four core brushes that should always be around for you to use. Like, you can literally render everything if you have those four brushes. And most of you have those four brushes in your basic kits, so... Good shit. I think the hardest brush to find is, like, your favorite brush, the one that you sketch with. I do a lot of my art with that brush only, um, but... As we get into, like, other lessons, I'll show you guys, uh, 
should do a lesson on how to make a brush. Those are always helpful. Yeah, they are. They are very helpful. Um, but yeah, that, that will probably be its own night. But we are coming up here on our two hour mark to close out. So I am going to upload this tomorrow. Um, so Patreon people, you have access to this Photoshop file to mess around. And uh, this VOD will be up on my channel for a f like a few days. I think it's seven days. Um, so next Monday, you'll be able to catch up. Um, yeah, I love it. I love my furry ball. Also, make sure you tag your uh, sketches on Twitter so that I may retweet them. I might retweet them tomorrow morning because it's better time to do it, but I'll see. I'll poke my head and see who, if Twitter's active and I'll press buttons. But it's yeah. basically free advertising. It's free real estate. Free real estate. But yeah. And I'll try to do better to be more organized and go in order of things. I struggle. At least uh, writing things down helps me a lot. So prepping this today helped me. I've been a little bit rusty coming out of my teaching years. Alas. <laughs> but yeah. That was fun. What do you think we should cover next week, Fair? How to do glass. How to do glass. Oh. I think that we, we didn't have enough time to cover that because we were stuck on the fur ball. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, glass, like I said, those surfaces are really complicated. Reflective surfaces suck. Like, when I did my lighting class with Sam Nielsen, like, he dedicated an entire class to reflective surfaces. An entire class to skin, too. Because skin is one of those surfaces that has um, a, a thing called subsurface scattering, which um, is, like, it's like the meta of, like, glass. Because really, your hands, and, and, like, you can see light through them. I mean, they're, they're semi-transparent. And being able to capture that transparency, plus the tone of your skin, plus, like, what blood vessels do to tone your skin and stuff, and it's a hot mess. Like, skin is just one of those really hard things to render. Maybe something quicker would be water. Yeah, I wanted to do, like, environments and, like, beach stuff. Just because it's summer and like beach water, like I love doing those rolling waves, and that's something that like literally anybody could just pick up a canvas and start just like farting color down on and playing with. So we could do a water thing. I know it would be really helpful. I know you're probably far off from like laying down figures and stuff, but doing a figure type of how you cheat because i remember we went through that one time and that's that's probably good as getting that really extended pose and how you kind of lay down a quick sketch to get the idea down and yeah. then you go back through and you you do more of a sketch and then you render it from there absolutely i definitely want to do figure drawing stuff obviously we can't have a live like naked person on stream because um <laughs> You know what? We could have a live naked person in a private stream, but not on Twitch. Um, that's another thing. I wanted to set up getting like private uh, or at least Patreon only streams. But honestly, I like doing this for the community. I think uh, education should be as affordable as it can. And the more support I get through Patreon, the more time I can dedicate to it because I'm not having to invest that time into doing commissions and getting very tired. I love doing commissions, though. But, you know, you have, like, an art quota, an amount of energy that you have to allot for work. And even though it's my job now, um, if I ha I'm cramming all of that into 
the production of art on one scale, it's very hard to allot energy to uh, making educational resources, which is what I really love to do. So here's hoping, and I hope it was helpful. I think it was. And yeah. we have plenty of topics to go over every week, so we just have to hone it in on like one thing at a time, and we have to be patient and not oh. jump right to body sketches. And also a thank you to everyone who joined me in the Discord channel tonight, because you guys are rock stars. And thank you for being here and helping. Mm. Your commentary makes it more fun. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like the furry ball. <laughs> oh, God, it makes my hand sweat. I want to pet it. Chewbalka. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. So yeah, uh, I think I'm going to end the stream now. So I'll catch you guys next week on the stream. Thank you for tuning in. If you want more content, don't forget to visit the Twitter, Patreon, and Instagram. All at Quell Fabulous, I think. Yeah. Uh, Patreon is Knox Quell. They update regularly with sketches, new art, and updates to their DOA. All great stuff. Great examples of great artists. They're a great community and very supportive. Uh, make sure to check out their YouTube channel. You know, they got all their process videos up there as well that they like to upload. Occasionally like a Final Fantasy. <laughs> Occasionally I upload a Final Fantasy video, but, you know, is what it is. Most of it is uh, art time lapses, though, which I really like to do. So, boom, I'll catch you next week. Uh, actually, tomorrow I'll be doing a workday stream. So catch me tomorrow working on commissions. But catch a stream like this at night next week. Have a good one. Bye. Bye.